What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are making over this R2D2 looking ass piece of furniture right here and giving it kind of a restoration slash facelift. Anyways, let's get flipping. So if you don't see it, uh, maybe this will help. I literally thought of R2-D2 as soon as I saw this piece, but Star Wars lookalike or not, I had to get it. It was a hundred bucks on Facebook Marketplace and has all these awesome, unique features that I've never seen before, such as these cool doors that open up to these open shelves that you can have for extra storage, storing cups or glasses, cocktail accessories, or anything else really. Originally, I actually didn't have a commission in line for this piece, but I ended up getting one kind of in the middle of it. So when I first started, I just went into it doing the usual thing that I do, just inspecting the piece for damage or repairs that need to be made, including this top portion of veneer that was in pretty bad shape with all of the stains and the cracking that was happening in the veneer. And then this was also a problem with wood pieces just being in place with nails. And so the whole whole thing was just a little bit shaky. But before we dive into this piece, let's get an entrance. Okay guys, this is serious. We are doing hard work and so let's get back to business. We're starting off by removing all of the unnecessary things like hinges, who needs those? No, but in all seriousness, I, I do like to take off all of the, as I like to call them, accessory pieces, just pretty much anything that's metal. And particularly in antique pieces, I tend to run into a problem where I can't use my usual tools that usually help me speed up the process because they end up doing things like this and dancing around. And usually things like this, manual hand labor power, typically work. However, sometimes the screws are too tiny or they're stuck, so you have to go in there with pliers and get them out. But here's the thing, folks. We never give up because every problem is workoutable. But no, taking off all of these little parts is very necessary because it helps you get into all the nooks and crannies of a piece when you're sanding, so that way you can make sure to get all of the finish off in all of the surfaces that you're trying to refinish or paint, and that way you don't get paint on any of the hardware because, you know, that just looks tacky. Unless it's like a vibe, which it can totally be if you're like including it as part of your aesthetic, but you know, I'm getting into uh, off the topic things. Anyways. Yeah, that's a problem. And don't worry, I, I won't make you listen to it again. Actually, I lied. Okay, so what I think is going on here is that there's two pins coming from inside the door and then extending into the sides here that are just, you know, holding it in place and allowing it to rotate on that pin. I don't know how much I like that just simply because 
that. I want to fix that somehow, but I'm not sure how. I mean, I'm sure I could put some wax or something on there to lessen the sound a little bit, but I'm trying to think of a more permanent solution than that. So I may have to break the door. Okay, some of you are about to really hate me for doing this, but uh, we're gonna do it. I actually had a talk with my one of my clients in the middle of working on this piece, and originally we decided not to go with this piece for her because it just wouldn't fit the coffee machine that she wanted to put into it. However, it would fit it if I were to remove this top here and this guy. And since it makes this god-awful noise, I figured if we removed it, it wouldn't be that bad. Don't hate me, please. Okay, bye. So clearly you can tell that I'm remorseful for uh, doing to this cabinet what you wished that I wouldn't. So just keep that in mind. I'm very aware of what I'm doing, which is of course sacrilege because how dare I make a piece into something that my client will love forever, hopefully. Okay, I, I get it though. This is pretty extreme. So this piece is kind of super wobbly. It was just put together by a couple of nails. And given that, and given the fact that we have this little screw here sticking out, um, I am, I think, gonna try to just take the entire thing apart and kind of reassemble it and see where we can go from there. This could either go uh, extremely well and be super easy, or it could go very bad. Luckily, the taking apart thing was pretty easy. I was honestly just more nervous about putting it back together, considering that I didn't mark where any of the pieces go. And this definitely added a lot more work when it came to me having to remove all of the nails that were left behind, but I am telling you, it made the stripping process and the refinishing process so much easier. So just remember, folks, sometimes it's worth putting the work up front to save you time later. And also, I was able to get this stupid screw out. Speaking of stripping, eyebrows, eyebrows, it is that time of the day where I use my favorite stripper of all time, Stripwell's QCS Furniture Stripper, which it is so good. It cuts through that finish like nobody's business. So if you guys are wanting to try it out or you're looking to replenish your stock, check out the link in the description below. I also have a discount code there for you guys. But even without that discount, I am telling you guys, this stuff is worth the money. It works so well. Oh, and did I mention that it's non-toxic? Yeah, that's right. It uses something called chemistry. Ever heard of it? Yeah, it literally lifts the finish off of the wood using science. But seriously, this stuff is no joke. You just spray it on, leave it on for a couple of minutes, and then spray on a little bit of an extra coat and then scrub it down with a bristle brush. And then if it dries out, you just apply a little bit more and it's good to go again. It also has a super easy cleanup process. You can just spray more of it on there, or I personally like to use water and paper towels just to wipe everything off and you're good to go. It's seriously so easy and so safe to use.
And just like that, it's ready for a new finish. Gosh, beautiful. So remember those nails that I was telling you about? There were a couple of nails that I accidentally hit a little bit too much on the side, so I needed to go in there with my hammer and straighten it out. But it was super easy. Once I did that, they just hammered right through. So I broke off the tip of one of these nails, so it was all crooked and embedded and weird, so I had to uh, straighten it out, but in the process it broke off, so it left me with like hardly anything to hammer through the wood. So we're going to use a tool that will hopefully push the nail further into the wood so that I can grab onto the head of the nail with either my hammer or uh, my pliers, and uh, hopefully that'll work. And as you can see, it worked like a charm. You can get these tools in the description below. Well, that happened a lot easier than I thought it was going to. It really didn't have anything holding it in place besides these nails, so it came off pretty easy. And unfortunately, I couldn't push these nails back the way that they came, so I just grabbed them with my pliers and twisted them out the other way. Now that disassembly was done, it was finally time to get to sanding. And for this, I am making sure to wear protection of all sorts for both of my ears and my breathing because I'm using a vacuum and a sander. So that's a lot of noise going in there. So you wanna make sure that you're using extra protection. For the sanding, typically I go from 120 grit to 180 to 220. However, since I did the stripping, I don't have to go that low of a grit. So I just started out with my 220 and that worked great. But keep in mind that I did do that extra step of stripping off the finish before I got to sanding and that definitely cut down on my sanding time. So if you are working with a finish, do make sure to start with those lower grit. But just look at what I can do with 220 grit after stripping. Just another example of how putting work up front saves you time later. Another benefit of stripping before you sand is that you end up not risking burning through the veneer with your sander. I know I've done that so many times when I start with those lower grits, especially with a veneer that's as thin and as fragile as the ones found on antiques. So I basically just try to use stripper whenever I'm working on a piece, no matter what I'm using it for, at least for me. It's, it's basically been right for every occasion. For these side pieces, my client and I actually decided that we were going to cover them with wallpaper, so I just went in for a quick scuff sand to give the wallpaper a little bit more of a rough surface to adhere to. 
There was a split in one of the side panels that definitely needed to be repaired, but it was a really easy fix. I just took some wood glue and put it into a syringe and then made sure to get it as deep into the crack as I possibly could. Unfortunately, my syringe head or needle was just a little too thick to get all the way in there. So I just put what I could and then smeared the rest and tried to kind of pack it in as much as I could. Once all the glue was in place, I clamped everything together and made sure to put a clamp on top of it as well. That way I knew that it was coming together perfectly flat. For the stain color, I decided to go in with antique walnut. I'm not trying to change this piece drastically, I mean, other than the construction side of it, obviously. But as far as colors go and paint jobs and all that, I'm not trying to do anything crazy. I wanted to pay homage to what it was before and really try to keep as much of the original character that I could. For the wallpaper, I decided to go with a company called Spoonflower. They have beautiful options and my client actually was the one who showed me them. They're really well made and have peel and stick options as well as the roll on glue and paste option, which I've actually heard from several people that that version is easier than the peel and stick, but honestly I have not been brave enough to try that, so peel and stick it is. If you would like a link to this specific wallpaper, comment down below and I'll send you the link. For the application, I decided to do it from the side, which maybe is a little taboo, I'm not really sure, but I decided that this was gonna be the easiest way for me. And then I used this little tool that came with my order to kind of just smash all of the air bubbles out. And it's this little plastic scraper that you just press along the wallpaper and then I just peel back the lining and you just press out all the bubbles as you go, kind of like what I'm doing right now. For removing the excess, I just went in with an X-Acto knife and cut along the edges to get a nice crisp line. And then I basically did the exact same thing to like five more pieces. <laughs> but for some of the pieces, I actually had to refrain from doing because there were some screw holes that I would need to cover up later. And let me tell you, cutting these curved lines was by far the most satisfying part of this whole process. 
Speaking of process, make sure to subscribe and like and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flipping family. I put in so much work into these flips and into my videos, so your support is greatly appreciated and helps me to continue helping you. So since the nails weren't doing the best job, I decided to go in with a drill bit that countersinks my screws for me. That way, when I put the wallpaper over it, there wouldn't be all these weird bumps where the screw heads are. To align everything properly, I dropped in a teeny tiny drill bit to make sure that both of the holes were aligned so that when I drilled, it went through to the other side. My screw would just go right where the old nail would go. So if you notice here on the top, there's kind of an unfinished edge. So to make it look finished, I decided to commit even more scandal and cut off the sides of the old door. But hey, at least I'm using the original pieces, guys. But because of the original build, I mean, obviously it was supposed to have these pieces on top. So it just looked really unfinished and unprofessional to just leave it like that. And I wanted to look like it was, you know, meant to be this way, like it was purposeful. And I thought that this was a great way to incorporate the old things that were once a part of it while keeping the integrity of the piece. So maybe now you can start to see my vision a little bit clearer. Before attaching these suckers, I made sure to put a piece of painter's tape there because I didn't want any glue to get onto the wallpaper and completely ruin it. So I just put it on there and then folded a little crease at the bottom so that any glue that does get squeezed out ends up pooling within that crease. Once the glue was on there, I made sure to spread it around with my little thingy there and get an even coverage on every single part of the surface. And then I did the same for the bottom part of this piece of trim here. And then once everything was nice and aligned, I nailed it into place with my nail gun. Once you're done nailing, you can wipe up all of the excess glue that was spludged out, and that'll just keep you from having to do some more sanding later. Also, another pro tip, um, cut your tape before you start peeling it, especially if you're dealing with glue, because it's just, it's just gonna tear and leave you with a tiny little strip along the top to peel off, which is really challenging. So just take my advice and do it before you even start peeling. To fill in the cracks and old nail holes, I went in with some quick wood wood filler and this stuff works great. It stays in place miraculously well and is very, very hard when it dries, making it the perfect thing to do repairs with. Once everything was dry, I went in with a hand sanding pad that was a pretty low grit just to get all of the excess stuff off. But before I did my final round of sanding with the orbital sander, I wanted to add just one more extra piece of trim. But before I added the trim, I wanted to place the wallpaper into place and I made sure that the end of the wallpaper was right where the trim was gonna cover. That way the wallpaper wouldn't be sticking out in between the two pieces of trim. Notice that I'm cutting this piece at a 45 degree angle. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. 
To attach this piece of trim, I'm using the exact same method I used before, except for this time, I am not going in with my nail gun because the nails would just go right through the other side. So I am just putting a good layer of glue on here and then clamping it down and letting it dry. So here's that 45 degree angle I was talking about. I did this because I want to fill in this gap with quick wood putty and that way I can kind of mold it to be the same shape as the original trim and make it look really cohesive and nice. Look at this professional over here. Oh my god, she's doing such a good job. When in reality, the reason why I'm using wood putty to begin with is because I don't have the tools or knowledge to do this with real wood so just you know keep that in mind too just keep in mind that we make do with the tools that we got both physically and mentally so i'm not a hundred percent sure that this craig jig is actually not gonna go through the other side i want the screws to go in from underneath and be able to screw into the sides without puncturing through the top. I don't know if it's actually going to do that at the measurements that it has. So I'm taking a scrap piece of wood that's exactly the width of this piece and testing it just to see and make sure that it doesn't puncture through the other. And it doesn't. Yay. You know, this, this Craig Jig stuff is uh, pretty cool. And just like all the other products I use, it also can be found in the description below. And now that all my secret screw holes were in place, it was finally time to get to assembling. This is the most exciting part because you get to see everything come together and it's so satisfying. But unfortunately, this bottom portion right here wasn't thick enough for me to put secret holes. So that did allow me some good old time with my nail gun, which was honestly really fun and very satisfying. These vertical trim pieces here were definitely a little trickier to put on just because of the nature of their shape, but I'm telling you these clamps made it so much easier.
So I don't know if you guys noticed, but when I took off this door, there was just a gap between the top frame of the door and then the shelf that was on there. So to get rid of that gap, I left the top part of the door frame just right where it is, and I attached it using the secret little Craig jig holes that I made. But then for the shelf, I ended up having to flip it over because it had this angled cut that went inwards and so it added this weird slope. So I just flipped it over and made that slope go downwards towards the piece of trim like you see here. Which actually ended up working pretty perfectly. It looks like it was meant to be that way. Okay, so just take stock of this real quick, just, just for later. Notice the space above the mirror. Keep that in mind. The space above the mirror where you can see the wallpaper. Keep that in mind for later. It'll be important. I forgot to film the portion where I cleaned up this hardware, but it's so easy. I've done it in so many of my other videos. All you have to do is just take them into some hot water and put some Brasso or Barkeeper's Friend on them and they clean up no problem. I didn't really care for the hardware that came with the piece, so I took some hardware from a other piece that I had left over and just brushed some gold on there to make it match the wallpaper a little bit more. And I think this really helped tie it in with the feminine contrast of the wallpaper and the masculine energy of a coffee bar. And in case you're ever dealing with a piece of hardware that has two holes, a super easy solution is to take a piece of tape and put it over the back of your hardware and either puncture the holes or just mark where they are with a pen. That way they are always perfectly aligned and you can just put them on the piece and you don't have to worry about measuring. And you know it wouldn't be a Miss Flips original if I didn't use some paint. My clients and I decided to get a color match of the darker green that is in the wallpaper and use it to just make a little bit of a trim accent around the piece. And take my word for it, I know it looks like a light gray, I know it does, but it is not. It is perfectly color matched with the dark green in the wallpaper, I promise you. It just shows up this way on camera for whatever reason. Also, if you use a color matching service, don't get nervous after the first coat of paint because the first coat is very deceiving. You don't really start to see the true color of the paint until about the second or third, maybe even sometimes fourth coat of paint. So be patient and trust the process. Music 
Because this is a coffee bar, it's gonna need some outlet holes. So I went in with a drill bit that specifically made a rounded hole that was perfectly the size of my cord hole cover. And since my client wanted to keep the mirror, I opted to put a hole in the bottom of the shelf and then out the back. So there's two holes that the cord goes through in order to be plugged in. Probably not the most functional design, but definitely the most aesthetic. To put my hole covers in place, I'm using this non-drip extreme glue, self-proclaimed extreme glue, might I add, and I'm just putting a good coating around the edge and then pressing the hole cover into place and giving it a little twist just to make sure that it has good coverage, and then I clean up all of the excess with a paper towel. I opted for non-drip because I was going to be working with this one, which is vertical, and I didn't want anything to be dripping onto the wallpaper once I put it in place. And just like it advertised, it held it extremely well. So remember that space above the mirror that I told you to remember? Well, I ended up hating it, and that was after I had already taken staged photos of my piece and everything, but it took me looking at those photos to acknowledge that I hated it. So I ended up making this piece of trim to put underneath it to push it up and get rid of that gap above the mirror. And that way it just looked really nice and clean and polished instead of having this weird awkward gap above it. But anyways guys, we are coming to an end on this project. I just wanna say a huge thank you for all of your support. If you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flippin' family. And until next time guys, Stay flippin'.